Wow, uh, three really tough acts to follow. Um, I'm still thinking about that uh, circle puzzle. That's wonderful. Um, my name's David Plasco. I'm here from Clayton State University. Uh, so I'd like to start out just by taking a moment, um, moment to share my appreciation for everyone who's helped me to be here, all the institutions and people, especially those folks in this room, Colin, Bob. Um, if you see your name up here, thank you so much for um, encouraging me and, and you know, helping me find this community. This is a great place, and I'm super appreciative. Um, so a little bit of background. Um, I don't need to tell you all too much about the Rubik's Cube. We always hear about the 43 quadrillion states. Um, but you know, that's a, we tend to only hear about the solved state, or mostly hear about the solved state, uh, or completely scrambled states. And I think there are other positions on Rubik's Cubes that are equally interesting. Um, and even as far back as Singmaster's notes, he did have a section on, um, on pretty patterns. And that's what I've spent the last five years exploring, is pretty patterns on generally all twisty puzzles, but specifically n by n by n puzzles. Um, so I want to share some of that with you. So first off, I want to say that every cube that I'm about to show you is solvable. That is, that you can, uh, using legal moves, oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, using legal, legal moves, you can resolve this back to the solid faces on each side. Um, but I also like to think of them all as solved. So they're both solvable and in a solved state themselves. So uh, for instance, you're probably familiar with the cube and a cube and a cube on the traditional three by three um, cube. Um, there's also a, a zigzag that you can put on these. Um, and that leverages, both e these two leverage kind of a, a corner symmetry, like around this red, white, and blue corner. And this leverages my favorite symmetry, the hexagon that goes around the kind of this equator area of the cube. Um, with larger n by n cubes, you can start to combine these. So here, this is the first uh, combination of these two. I made a link out of uh, a cube and a cube on each side of this. And then the zigzag kind of winds in between them. And I realized that you can, you know, you can start to make more and more complex uh, link, not, uh, link patterns with these. Um, so just generally, if you're interested in all the things involved, so there's that three by three that's in the, um, in the cube. And each of these larger cubes has uh, permutation classes for the center pieces and for the wing pieces. So that's kind of the constraint that I'm working with here. Uh, if you're interested in like actually the constraints, I'm more than willing to talk about those, but I, I just want to share all the pretty stuff. This is the elevator pitch, right? So, um, so with larger cubes, you got more space. You can use uh, two zigzag patterns, right? So you, you can get this kind of uh, double helix thing going here. Um, or you can have three or even uh, four and get a, a, a nice braid. And that's just four of those. And the trick here is getting different colors so that when they cross, the, the crossings look pretty. I call these um, photogenic because they're spread out with each other. And, um, and they, uh, you can differentiate the foreground from the background. So I also um, like to explore some of the symmetries of the cube um, just by virtue of permutation. So one, one thing I tried, so it's kind of hard to tell this. It's orange and red here. So I just I thought, OK, what if I take some of these wing pieces on the edges and on, on this face, I, I use all the right reds and the left oranges. And I kind of do that around the cube. Um, and then try to connect up these colors. You know, what's, what, what are the possibilities here? And so when you do that, you can, um, you can see that uh, you get this, like you can have like isolated um, knots relative uh, you know, from the rest of the cube. And you might notice that this knot right here is a trefoil. Um, so that was a nice thing to pop out, but that's not like the only possibility when you when you do this edge um, uh, exercise. But you can actually get a, a whole bunch. There's a, I haven't worked out all the permutations and everything, but um, there's a lot of those. So I wanted to visualize um, these knots and what was actually going on here. So uh, I'm going to go back to the slides. If that's okay. Um, so I just like put this on the normal um, skeleton of the cube to try to track out what's going on here. And you can kind of contract that knot and see that, like, OK, that one was this really nice uh, link between these four squares. Um, but I also wanted to try other visualizations. So this is a projection of the cube onto the unit disk. Um, so you've got the, 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 the corner in the center is the, the red, white, and blue corner. The perimeter of this is the orange, yellow, green corner. So that's just kind of been projected out to the, to the, um, to the boundary of the disk. Um, and when you do this, you can um, contract that knot in a, a, sl a slightly different way. It's the same linking as the previous picture that I showed you. Um, so another question that I've been chasing is like, OK, so given some knots, like how can you make them on a cube? 
and which cubes can you make them on, and stuff like that. So um, I've, I've made the, the unknot through the 7-7 seven, seven knot. Uh, and all these are on the smallest cube that I could fit them on to date, using the fewest number of colors that I could fit them on to date. And uh, that means very specific things, but just um, that's where I'm at with this right now. Um, also, you can find knots in your life. So Colum um, posted this knot uh, that his uh, dr uh, dryer and washer did to his bathrobe, uh, and I had to put that on a cube. I have this with me here today on, uh, on my 11 cube. Um, <laughs> Also, famously, uh, the Conway knot was shown to be knot slice recently, and so I had to honor that. I um, also have that here with me. Um, and this is G4G14, uh, but there's 15 knots here on the screen. Uh, the unknot I did not come up with, that's, that's lore, uh, that's canon, so I'm going to remove that, and there's my 14 for you. Thank you. <laughs>